The Philippines is fortunate to have many heritage heroes whose strong passion and commitment made all of us aware of the importance of safeguarding our shared national heritage. Obvious heroes are government agencies, UNESCO National Commission of the Philippines, National Commission for Culture and the Arts, National Museum, National Historical Commission of the Philippines, and the Intramuros Administration. But the true heritage heroes are the country's heritage stakeholders, heritage NGOs, and the few committed individuals who were active long before the government established conservation initiatives. These trailblazing NGOs and individuals have worked for years to awaken Filipinos who are unaware of the value of their vanishing heritage. Two heritage organizations have set the pace for conservation in the Philippines. The first is the ICOMOS Philippine Committee, organized in the mid-1980s. ICOMOS, or the International Council for Monuments and Sites, is the NGO that globally regulates heritage professionals. Headquartered in Paris, it is the body that the UNESCO World Heritage Committee officially consults on cultural heritage issues and world heritage matters. Heritage professionals make up the membership of ICOMOS Philippines. Members have actively introduced Philippine heritage to the global audience while promoting our heritage properties and local conservation practices. As a result, we are now internationally acknowledged as a global good practice example in heritage management. The second heritage NGO is the Heritage Conservation Society, or HCS. This is the country's heritage frontliner. The Heritage Conservation Society is a diverse grouping of students, individuals, and professionals interested in heritage who form the broad-based membership of the HCS. The HCS brings heritage issues to national awareness. We really want to create a society that values its heritage, and that's the direction we are moving towards. No? We want to live in a society where you don't have to tell people not to demolish buildings because they understand why it's important to conserve no, or preserve a particular structure. HCS members continue to loudly sound off alarm bells and alert the public and government authorities about heritage in peril. Vigilance will again boil down to a community effort. The Heritage Conservation Society cannot do this alone. If the local community understands what uh, heritage is, what the importance of heritage conservation, uh, we will definitely have eyes to make sure that uh, heritage in, in that particular locality will, of course, uh, be conserved. No? Following the lead of the HCS, heritage groups were organized in different cities. The Iloilo City Cultural Heritage Conservation Council has successfully protected commercial heritage buildings in the city center as well as many ancestral homes of Iloilo. First, we identified all the heritage buildings and then we um, worked with some of the members of the Heritage Council, our architects. So we had a catalog to document before the buildings get destroyed, the architectural details of these buildings. And then we mapped out the heritage zone. And after that, we started to talk to building owners until we thought of joining forces with a young councillor, uh, Councillor Lex Tupas, and then he crafted this ordinance which asked for a tax incentive for businessmen to invest and also building owners to restore their buildings. And uh, so the tax incentive kind of got the ball rolling. You can restore a building, but if no one is proud of it, it will just rot and decay. But if you put something and everyone is proud of it, everyone feels he owns it, then he will protect it. In Pila Laguna, Cora Relova's Heritage Crusade led to the organization of the Pila Historical Society. The society was the guiding light that watched over the long process of restoring the forgotten homes of Pila and actively spearheaded the revival of the town's vanishing living traditions. Today, Pila is a major example of successful town restoration in the Philippines and is a popular tourism destination. 
The Santa Ana Heritage Tourism Association looks after its urban heritage district situated on the banks of the Pasig in Manila. And we started to develop with the grassroots. Uh, we did um, educational programs, workshops, training sessions with church members, heritage homeowners, students, teachers, uh, barangay officials, jeep associations, tricycle drivers, and vendors of the market. And uh, it was a socioeconomic development strategy that was adopted by our group, by the stakeholders, to develop community-based heritage tourism in Santa Ana. Because it's very important for an organization to have the support of the local people. And although it takes time, we're, we're not finished yet, we're still working on it, it's important that they feel ownership. The local community successfully persuaded a giant developer to adjust its proposed design for a supermarket to a more people-friendly scale that blended with the existing streetscape. So I would consider that that was a, a first to, uh, in effect, get a giant business to sit down and listen to the community and instead of fight us, work with us. And today they are our friends. Also in Manila, owners of heritage buildings form the Escolta Commercial Association that intends to breathe new life to the Escolta once the prime business center of Manila. The group's leading heritage advocate and spokesperson is architect Dominic Galicia. The main challenge, as, as, we, as we've seen, is to let the rest of the city know that Escolta is here. That Escolta is here with these beautiful buildings, with lots of space that needs to be used. Designed by the renowned architects Andres Luna de San Pedro, Juan Nacpil, Carlos Arguelles, and others, Surviving Escolta buildings are markers of a bygone era. Despite being gracious and elegant, they are underutilized today. We're not a very long street, but we're a street that has beautiful buildings, that is parallel to a river, and across that river is, is the walled city of Intramuros. So, in terms of context, it cannot be beat. In partnership with heritage youth groups, the association has set up walking tours, monthly art festivals, and heritage events that are now attracting people to the Escolta area. Escolta's vibrancy is returning. What we need now is incentives. The financial rewards of a place like Escolta have to be seen in the long term. They, do, they don't have to be seen on an annual basis of, of how much taxes you can get from these properties, but have to be seen in the long term of establishing a, a place that really in many ways is, is world-class. In Cebu City, Casa Gorordo, an iconic Bahay Nabato, or Balay Natisa in Cebuano, has been converted into a museum and showcases the commitment of the Ramon Naboitis Foundation to the preservation of our culture and heritage. I think this starts uh, goes back to the dream of Don Ramon, wherein um, you know, he always wanted to have a place where people can look at the past mm -hmm. and um, is able to connect with the past. And, and this has been uh, realized by buying this, um, the house or acquiring the house yes. from, from the Gorodos. But I think culture is a very important component of one's um, mm -hmm. existence as a people. Without culture, it is very difficult to connect with the present. For the past 50 years, the foundation has worked towards improving people's lives through best practices in community development. The Culture and Heritage Program allows people to have an opportunity to appreciate the past, but at the same time also be able to plot its future mm -hmm. and to anchor it very well. And then there is Escuela Taller, an Intramuros-based NGO which trains out-of-school youth in proper restoration and conservation methods. It's uh, unique in the sense that uh, in the Philippines, uh, it is the only uh, institution, as far as I know, that really trains uh, uh, workers in the art and craft of uh, heritage conservation. So these are all techniques that, unfortunately, uh, construction companies uh, or maybe even architects are uh, unaware of. Heritage conservation has also greatly benefited from the efforts of exemplary individuals who can rightfully be called heritage heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Carlos Saldran is a cult figure who is on a mission to lead anyone and everyone who wishes to join him, whether Filipino or foreign, to discover the hidden heritage of Manila. Ivan Mandy walks people through Manila's Chinese quarter in Binondo, introducing them to Filipino Chinese culture and the area's distinct Chinoy lifestyle. And what better way to learn about the lifestyle than by tasting local food as Ivan takes you to small, family-style restaurants that are frequented by Binondo locals. I'm Susan Medina. For many years, heritage icon Susan Calo Medina shared her love for the Philippines its people and their culture through her long-running television travel show. Bambi Harper is among the earliest heritage researchers and activists who made a large impact on conservation in the country. Aside from being one of the founders of the Heritage Conservation Society, she was a heritage columnist and served the term as Intramuros Administrator. Monsignor Gigi Gaston is among the pioneers of conservation in Bacolod. Now retired, he has returned to his roots and now lives in the ancestral Gaston Hacienda House. As a committed conservation advocate, he continues to speak out against the destruction and disappearance of his province's heritage treasures. Looking at Bohol, looking at Cebu, and going around in Panay, I have discovered that ours here in Negros has the most vandalized of all churches. We have not preserved them properly. We have sold our old antique statues. We have, if not stolen, sold our precious vessels in the church. And it is unfortunate that we are now trying to restore, not really restore, put up our churches with things that doesn't fit into it. He also provides unique insights on the role of traditional family values in heritage conservation. We all agreed, nothing will leave this house. It will be for us a symbol of our unity as a family. And that is part of, the, of preserving heritage, not like a museum. Eugene Hammerlan is a dedicated Iloilo heritage researcher who applies his research into organizing community-based tourism experiences that combine all aspects of local heritage, from tangible architecture to intangible music and cuisine. I think I do this because Iloilo has so many stories to tell, and I am one of the storytellers. Iloilo has very good bones, no? so it doesn't take much for you to, to discover its, its treasures. Heritage for me is um, a second like investment in the future. And this is a chance to show to um, our next generation what they will miss if they don't celebrate it. Two heritage advocates are on the front line of Bohol's conservation efforts. Historian Marianito Luzpo knows and unselfishly shares everything there is to know about his own province. Maybe those years of neglect had worked to our advantage because had we been industrialized in the 60s, what do you think would happen to our, to our waterways? What do you think would happen to our mountains? And most especially, what would happen to our heritage structures? To help promote Bohol as a major heritage tourism destination, Doi Nunang put up Amarela Resort, which reflects the province's traditional arts, culture, and history. If we don't carry on with the preservation of our heritage, our young may no longer be thinking of themselves as Filipinos, especially in this fast-changing world. Local tour guide Eric Tedase is active in conserving the unique architectural and urban heritage of Sariaya in Quezon Province. Nahahayitan yung interest na yan sa paggamit ko po ng social media like Facebook. Ang nagiging uh, resulta po noon, marami pong gustong pumarito at mag-tour. So, feeling ko po na kapag contribute din po ako sa aming lipunan dahil sa pagparito po ng mga turista, syempre magugutom po yung mga yan. So, bibili po sila sa mga tindahan namin dito ng pasalubong, ng tubig, ng pagkain. Marjo Gasser, 
nurtured her vision that heritage should bestow national and international recognition to Bigan. For almost three decades, Marjo quietly worked in the background, living to see her vision for Bigan fulfilled. Sadly, she passed away before receiving the public recognition that she so deserved. Marjo's untimely passing teaches us a lesson that our heritage heroes deserve to receive our recognition during and not after their lifetimes. There is therefore a need for a new generation of heritage heroes to join the crusade begun by pioneer conservation advocates such as Marjo Gasser and Susan Calo Medina. Fortunately, there are younger individuals like Joel Aldor and Conrad Alampay who are using their knowledge of state-of-the-art digital technology to help preserve our national treasures. Joel has set up Project Kisame to document the often neglected art of ceiling paintings in our heritage churches. Ceiling art is not just about uh, the Sistine Chapel or the, uh, you know, the, these other magnificent paintings that can be found in Europe. We actually have them here. Anyone around the world can now see our um, ultra-high-resolution images. They can download them in various resolutions if they, can, uh, if they want to uh, have a, a better appreciation of the works done by uh, these Cebuana artists. So we want to uh, study them, we want to uh, document them so that we know how to preserve them. I brought out our 3D laser Conrad, on the other hand, is an information technology expert who heads a company which pioneered the use of digital scanners in the country to create detailed records of heritage structures. The reason why this technology is really revolutionary is because um, we capture so many points, so much resolution in our survey. If a structure collapsed today and we have these records, we can rebuild it as faithful as possible since we capture millimeter accurate and high resolution information of the structure. Whenever I bring back data to my team from scanning a site, and it's a heritage site, I always tell them, you know, you're not just tracing um, a line there. You're not just tracing point to point. What you're doing is actually tracing a piece of history. Through their use of modern technology and social media, this new breed of heritage advocates is proving to be a powerful force in the struggle to save our tangible heritage.